Mani polite, Italian, Mani pulite, Italian for clean hands, was a nationwide judicial investigation into political corruption in Italy held in the 1990s. Mani polite led to the demise of the so called First Republic, resulting in the disappearance of many political parties. Some politicians and industry leaders committed suicide after their crimes were exposed. Antonio Di Pietro was the main judicial figure in charge of the operation. In some accounts, as many as 5,000 public figures fell under suspicion. At one point, more than half of the members of the Italian parliament were under indictment. More than 400 city and town councils were dissolved because of corruption charges. The estimated value of bribes paid annually in the 1980s by Italian and foreign companies bidding for large government contracts reached $4 billion dollars $6.5 trillion lire. The corrupt system uncovered by the investigation was referred to as tangentopoli, Italian pronunciation, tandon t poli. The term derives from tangente, which means kickback, and in this context refers to kickbacks given for public works contracts, and poli meaning city. It is thus sometimes translated as bribesville or kickback city. Arrest of Mario Chiesa Tangentopoli began on 17 February 1992 when Judge Antonio Di Pietro had Mario Chiesa, a member of the center-left Italian Socialist Party PSI, arrested for accepting a bribe from a Milan cleaning firm. The Psy distanced themselves from Chiesa, with Psy leader Bettino Craxi calling him Mariolo, or villain, a wild splinter, of the otherwise clean party. Upset over this treatment by his former colleagues, Chiesa began to give information about corruption implicating them. This marked the beginning of the Mani Polite investigation. News of political corruption began spreading in the Italian press. Extension of anti-corruption investigations In the 1992 elections, the center-right Christian Democracy DC, held onto power when its coalition government kept a small majority, while leftist opposition parties gained support. However, the Italian Communist Party split after the fall of the Soviet Union, depriving the opposition of leadership. Many votes went to the far-right Lega Nord, which was not inclined to form alliances with other parties at the time. The resulting parliament was therefore weak and difficult to bring to an agreement. During April 1992, many industrial figures and politicians from both the government and the opposition were arrested on charges of corruption. While the investigations started in Milan, they quickly spread to other towns as more politicians confessed. One grotesque situation occurred when a socialist politician immediately confessed to all of his crimes to two carabinieri who had come to his house, only to later discover that they had come to deliver a mere fine for a traffic violation. Fundamental to this increased exposure was the general attitude of the main politicians to drop support for subordinates who got caught. This made many of them feel betrayed, and they often implicated many other figures, who in turn would implicate even more. On 2 September 1992, the socialist politician Sergio Moroni, charged with corruption, committed suicide. He left a letter pleading guilty, declaring that crimes were not for his personal gain but for the party's benefit, and accused the financing system of all the political parties. Effect on national politics In the local December elections, D.C. lost half of their votes. The day after that, Craxi was officially accused of corruption. After many other politicians were accused and jailed, Craxi eventually resigned from the PSI. On 5 March 1993, the Italian government of Giuliano Amato and his justice minister Giovanni Conso tried to find a solution with a decree, which allowed criminal charges for several bribery-related crimes to be replaced by administrative charges instead. According to Italian popular opinion at the time, that would have resulted in a de facto amnesty for most corruption charges. Amid public outrage and nationwide rallies, the Italian president Oscar Luigi Scalfaro refused to sign the decree, deeming it unconstitutional. The following week, a $250 million affair involving ENI, the government-controlled national energy company, was revealed. The stream of accusations, confessions and jailing continued. 
On 25 March, the Italian parliament changed the municipal electoral law in favor of a majoritarian system. Later, on 18 April, the public overwhelmingly backed the abrogation of the existing proportional representation parliamentary electoral law in a referendum. A mixed system was introduced that August, causing Amato to resign three days later. Still shocked by the recent events, the parliament was unable to produce a new government. Carlo Itzelio Ciampi, former governor of the Bank of Italy, was appointed head of the government. He appointed a technical government without political influences. In the meantime, the investigation of Craxi was blocked by the parliament. Several members of the government, having been in office just three days, resigned in protest, among them were Minister of the Environment Francesco Rutelli and Minister of Finance Vincenzo Visco. In new local elections on 6 June 1993, D.C. lost half of its votes once again, the PSI virtually disappeared. Instead Lega Nord, a far-right protest movement, became the strongest political force in northern Italy. The left-wing opposition was approaching majority, but still lacked unity and leadership. Eventually, all four parties in the 1992 government disappeared, at different times in different ways, DC, the PSI, the Italian Socialist Democratic Party, and the Italian Liberal Party. The Democratic Party of the Left, the Italian Republican Party and the Movimento Sociale Italiano were the only surviving national parties, the Republican Party is the only one that has maintained its name since. The Cassani Trial On 20 July 1993, the former ENI president, Gabriele Colliery, committed suicide in jail. His wife later gave back $3 million of illegal funds. Meanwhile, Cassani faced trial and was accused of crimes connected to Enamont, a joint venture between ENI and another energy company, Montedison. The trial was broadcast on national television, and was a sort of showcase of the old politics being brought to their responsibilities. While Cassani himself was not a major figure, the connection of his crimes to the Enamont affair called in all the nation's major politicians as witnesses. A high note was reached in the Cassani trial when former head of government Arnaldo Forlani, answering a question, simply said, I don't remember. He happened to be very nervous and did not notice that sweat was accumulating on his lips, and that image was by many considered symbolic of the people's disgust for the corrupt system. Craxi, instead, admitted that his party received $93 million of illegal funds, defending his actions by saying that everyone was doing this. Even the Lega Nord was implicated in the trial. Secretary Umberto Bossi and former treasurer Alessandro Patelli were convicted for receiving 200 million lire of illegal funding, approximately $100,000 at the time. A bribe to the Italian Communist Party was alleged, but it was not established who had committed the offense. A number of Milanese members of the Democratic Party of the Left were charged with corruption during their time as members of the PCI, but they were acquitted. As Prosecutor Antonio Di Pietro stated, Penal responsibility is personal. I cannot bring here a person with the first name Communist and last name Party. La responsabilità penale e personale, non posso portare in giudizio una persona che si chiami partito di nome e comunista di canone. The Enamont trial itself was carried out after the Cassani trial, with much less public interest. Investigations on other fronts in the meantime, the investigation expanded outside the political range. On 2 September 1993, the Milan judge Diego Curto was arrested. On 21 April 1994, 80 financial regulators and 300 industry personalities were charged with corruption. A few days later, the Secretary of Fiat admitted corruption with a letter to a newspaper. Media tycoon Silvio Berlusconi entered politics later that year and won the 1994 general election, in what many thought was a move to shield his many business concerns from possible scrutiny. This suspicion was reinforced on of February, when Berlusconi's brother, Paolo, admitted to corruption crimes. On 13 July 1994, the Berlusconi government made a new law to avoid jail time for most corruption crimes, the passage of which was timed to coincide with Italy's defeat of Bulgaria in the 1994 Football World Cup. 
S semi-finals in the hopes that the public would be distracted. However, as Roberto Baggio shot high the last penalty against Brazil, and newscasts showed images of corrupt politicians leaving jail, public opinion became enraged. The images of Francesco de Lorenzo, former Minister of Health, were especially striking, since the general public perceived stealing money from hospitals an especially heinous act. Just a few days before, the arrested regulators had been talking about corruption in Fininvest, the holding company controlled by the Berlusconi family. Most of the judge pool declared that they would respect the state's laws, but they could not work in a situation where duty and conscience were to conflict, they requested therefore to be reassigned to other duties. Since the government could not afford to be seen as an adversary of the popular judge pool, the decree was hastily revoked and marked a misunderstanding. Interior Minister Roberto Maroni, of Lega Nord, claimed that he had not even had the chance to read it. While the Minister of Justice was Alfredo Biondi, allegations that the decree was written by Cesare Previti, a lawyer from Fininvest, are at least credible. On 29 July Berlusconi's brother was again arrested and immediately released. Escalating conflict between Berlusconi and Di Pietro At this point a public conflict erupted between Berlusconi and Di Pietro. While Berlusconi's companies were being investigated, inspectors were sent from the government to the Milanese judges' office to look for formal irregularities. None were ever found, but this tactic, coupled with Berlusconi's firm grip on the media, helped spread what is described in other environments as fear, uncertainty and doubt. The battle ended without winners. Di Pietro resigned on 6 December, two weeks before the Berlusconi government resigned ahead a critical confidence vote in parliament that was expected to go against them. During 1995, many investigations were started against Di Pietro, who would years later be cleared of all charges. Meanwhile, Berlusconi incurred other charges of corruption. It was later found that the man prosecuting Di Pietro, Fabio Salomone from Brescia, was the brother of a man that Di Pietro himself had prosecuted and sent to jail for various corruption charges. However, it wasn't until later that authorities realized the conflict of interest and reassigned Salomone, even though his investigations had taken a completely different direction. Paolo Berlusconi and Previti were accused of a conspiracy against Di Pietro, but the prosecutor who later replaced Salomone asked for their acquittal and so did the court. After being cleared, Di Pietro went into politics, despite previously not wishing to exploit the popularity gained doing what he perceived to be just his duty. His movement is named Italia dei Valori, Italy of Values. In 1998, Cesare Previti, then sitting in Parliament after the Berlusconi government, avoided jail thanks to parliamentary intervention, even though Berlusconi and his allies were in opposition. Craxi was sentenced to several years' cumulative jail time in definitive convictions and fled to Tunisia, where he remained until his death on 19 January 2000. Statutory term strategy After 1994, trials became likely to be cancelled due to the expiration of statutory terms. The government ignored the pleas of the judiciary system for more funding to buy equipment, and passed laws that made Italy s notoriously slow legal system even slower and subject to earlier prescription. The intricate nature of these laws allowed lawyers to use many delaying tactics, an instructive example was a prosecution of Berlusconi, where he was accused of misappropriation of Fininvest s funds in order to prepare black funds that could have been used for bribes or other illegitimate purposes. On the last possible day, a lawyer from Fininvest appeared in court and complained that his company had not been formally notified of the trial. While this trial was well publicized in the media, the formality forced the trial to be restarted from scratch, and Berlusconi was finally acquitted by expiration of statutory terms. Being acquitted in this first trial, he could later benefit from a general reduction of terms for other trials, which in turn expired earlier with a domino effect. After Berlusconi's victory in the 2001 election, public opinion had turned so far against judges, where it is not only openly acceptable to criticize them for having carried out Mani Polite, but also increasingly difficult to broadcast opinions favorable to Milan. 
S. Poole, some blame Berlusconi's media influence as having played a role in this change, or the inability of the opposition to gain the consent of conservative electors. Even Umberto Bossi, whose Lega Nord has been an opposition party, became highly critical of judges. Laudazione The term Laudazione, meaning the way a terrain is divided up in minor parts or lotti, came to indicate the procedure of awarding top positions in important state conglomerates such as IRI, ENEL or ENI to political figures, or at least managers with a clear political orientation. This usually trickled down to lower levels, creating power centers depending on political parties that controlled a significant part of the production system. The available seats were usually awarded so that government parties and opposition parties like the Italian Communist Party would get a share of power corresponding to their perceived influence in the government. In modern culture In 2005, artist Johnny Motti created a piece of soap, named Monty Polite, based on the scandal. This piece was claimed to have been created out of the fat from a liposuction of Silvio Berlusconi. It was sold at the 36th edition of Art Basel for €15,000. A 2015 television series titled 1992 is based on the events of Monty Polite. See also History of Italy as a Republic Giovanni Falcone Bancopoli, Italian scandal in 2005 Calciopoli Gate suffix References Further reading Nelkin, David, 1996 a Legal Revolution? The Judges and Tangentopoli. The New Italian Republic, From the Fall of the Berlin Wall to Berlusconi. Routledge. pp. 191-205. Buonanno, Paolo, Prerolo, Giovanni, Vannon, Paolo, January 2016. Organized Crime and Electoral Outcomes. Evidence from Sicily at the Turn of the 21 Century. European Journal of Political Economy. Elsevier, 41 to 61 minus 74. Doi 101016 J. Epolco. 2015.11.002. External links. In Italian, Tangentopoli e il crollo dei partiti. In Italian, Mani Polite. In Italian, one. Italy's clean hands judges bite their nails, New York Times.